We'll go back to Abu Dhabi. I'll conclude in moments with uh, Shagun Shawumi, but uh, very quickly here, yeah, you were on uh, uh, a, a track before we went on that break. But uh, if you look at it, uh, some other comments we're getting from some other officials, especially some uh, within the government. Uh, how does it, this sit with you when some are also alluding to the fact that, well, the president doesn't have to change um, uh, Mr. Magu, that he can still serve as in his acting capacity as the boss of the anti-corruption agency? Well, that's the prerogative of the president. We should not rob any of the sections or any of the arms of government of his powers. The president has a right to keep him there in acting capacity for some time, bring him to the Senate, get him refused, react him again. It's a president's prerogative. But what the president must know is that is the president going to now tell the world or even tell himself that he will keep somebody that is alleged to be corrupt and not investigate the veracity and the claims of the DSS report and then ask such a person to go fight corruption. It's like telling the devil to go and arrest the devil. It doesn't work that way. You, I, know, I know that we will find it extremely difficult to explain people that are really, really perfect without any problems, but I think that the one that will sit on top of EFCC must have a bit more than what others have. The kinds of things that are rumored to be in the DSS report ordinarily should concern anybody because if you take gifts, if you get unnecessary favors, if you're supposed to go on economy according to government policy and you're flying first class as it is alleged, this thing should be investigated. And if the presidency then decides that he's going to keep returning him, I haven't got a problem with that because I kind of like think that there might be some element of people who are scared of Magu anyway and scared of the way Magu is going about the job. No, so I don't want us to rob Magu of the ability to do his job. But we just also must know that the Senate has a right to do its own responsibility to. And the Senate has not said it's going to reject him. It just said they can't clear him because they have a DSS report. I'll expect those who are driving the presidency at the head to look at DSS. What's this? Where did you get it from? Can you substantiate it? Magu, these are the claims. What do you have to say? Do it their own executive investigation at their level. And therefore, if they are fully convinced, get their men that are in charge of running between the Senate Italian to run to the Senate and say, look, gentlemen, it's just a mistake. There's, tell us something. But from the point of view of the perception of fighting corruption, you cannot use corruption to fight corruption. That would not be right. Mm. And the presidency but, must I, I definitely think, live up to board I in that regard. And we're not let, me, let, me, let me bring this in so that it doesn't look like uh, we're, we're just about Magu today, because you also highlighted one other issue, which is also uh, our talking point today on the program. We're talking about the office of the secretary or the person. Now we're talking about the SDF, the Secretary of the Government of the Federation. He's also been fingered uh, by the National Assembly of the Senate, uh, also calling for his resignation. Looking at all of those things highlighted by the National Assembly, they are damning, you know, revelations that must really uh, be investigated. But as we speak now, talking about what is happening in the EFCC, who do you think should kick-start that investigation to help us uh, get to the bottom of uh, those allegations against the SDF? I think um, in the in two, general, two, two administrations, three administrations ago, this kinds of matter around the SDF would be okay, business as usual. It was a deliberate policy that the entire world keyed into with the Buhari administration which is that it is going to be about integrity, it's going to be about anti-corruption. You cannot have very high officers of that administration being this corrupt. The case of the SGF is painful. There's something called abuse of uh, office. There's something called uh, 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 due. There are rules. You can't be on the board of a company that is taking value from a system that you are the SGF. We, will, we won't get there overnight. So I think that by changing some people, by dropping some people, by investigating them, by sending a signal that these times have changed, maybe the next set of people that will come into some of those offices will understand that you can't hide some of this information. It may come out, and if it does come out, it embarrasses the, pres the government, the nation, and everybody. I think the person that has to be most embarrassed right now is the president 
For he found them. He chose them. They were at his prerogative. He should have known them. And if he didn't know them, if they made mistakes, heads must roll. One of the ways for you to even make sure that your anti-corruption fight has a bite is when you can apply it to yourself and to your aides. I remember hearing the president one time say, or is quoted as saying that, even if members of his immediate family were corrupt, they shouldn't be spared. So if his SGF is alleged to be corrupt, if they cannot take it to the now on cleared Magu, they better find a special panel to look at the issues around it, maybe an administrative panel made up of people from the office of the um, head of service or something, and find some other, just put something together to make sure that they can check so that people are not thrown away because of a lie. But if it proves to be true, I don't think the president should even ask, allow him to touch any letter. For the president is supposed to be squeaky clean according to how he wants to project himself and the integrity index that we give him we all know that he's a little bit better than most. Therefore, he should not be seen swimming around those that are just in the cesspool of corruption. So for me, that of the SGF is, he ought to do the honorable thing if he knows he's guilty. But if he's not guilty, it should be investigated. Those who are alleging it should prove. If they cannot prove it, then they should apologize. Because there is a point where we must calm down in this country. Our ultimate intention must be to develop our systems to make our country go, not that we're just interested in pulling down and just putting clocks in the wheel of progress. Well, but if anybody is corrupt, it should leave. So you do think that he still needs to be investigated? He has to be. You don't think that a Senate investigation is sufficient? Well, the thing is that, you see, um, if the Senate says he's, he's, they've investigated and is corrupt, the Senate is an arm of the, of, of, of the, of the system. It is, it's an independent organ. It can send its report to the president. The president may look at it and say, ah, on the strength of what I see the senators have written, I think they've done a thorough investigation, I'm adopting it. Or he has the privilege of saying, hey, executive, what do we have here? Can somebody confirm? Can you verify the stories? What do we... That's how to run it. 